Hey, Meeple people, and on today's vlog, we are playing Camp Pine Top by Talent Strike Studios. Go ahead and pass me them graham crackers. Rise and shine, campers, the bugle is sounding. Roll up your sleeping bags, break down your tents, and get ready for another beautiful day. Are you going to scramble up Rainbow Ridge? Delve deep into Fiddler's Woods? Explore the depths of the Fairy Fire Caves? Or will you take a canoe out to Lantern Island? Grab your gear and let's get going. Hey, Meeple people, and hello, Sarah. Hi there. So, Sarah, what are we playing today? Today, we are playing Camp Pine Top by Talon Strikes Studios. They've sent us this copy of the game for the channel. Thank you very much. This is a game for one to five players where we are um, different animals in sort of like scout troops. So, I'm in troop 3939 and we are attempting to raise uh, rise through the ranks of our scout troop uh, to sort of get the promotions and get to the top rank in our scout troop faster than the other players. We're going to start out as little possums that's like our rank uh, and then we are going to move on to skunks, beavers, raccoons, and finally badgers and whichever player can get promoted to the rank of badger first wins the game. So the way that it works is um, for the rank that you're at, we have a little token. So I will start with this token on my possum rank. And this indicates to me uh, a few things. So right here, this is going to tell me sort of like what governs my, my turns as a possum. So this gives me an eight card hand limit. And then the next rank, which is what I'm trying to achieve next, is skunk. It's going to tell me what I need to actually achieve to be promoted to the skunk rank. So um, these little dashed lines here are sort of like an or symbol. Uh, so I need to achieve two of these or two of these or two of these. And these these are different patches which I can gain throughout the game. So for example, to become, to go from possum to skunk, I need two green circle badges, two blue square badges, or two brown triangle badges. So if I were to achieve, let's just pretend for a second that I had earned my backpacking badge, um, I would put this here. Uh, and there's a spot for each of the badges and that would give me one of the two green circular badges that I need to move from the rank of possum to skunk. And, and then let's say on another turn, I was able to get my recruiter badge, then I would have both of those uh, green circle badges that I need to move down to the next rank and get promoted. Then the game changes up just a little bit. My hand limit becomes seven cards and what I need to achieve the next rank is right down here. So in this case here, I could do two greens and two blues, or I could do two blues and two browns, or I could do three greens and one brown. And in addition, at this level here, I also need to start um, sort of um, refining my skills a little bit. So any future, uh, any previous skill that I had gained, I would need to refine a little bit so that it had sort of um, so you have to flip it over. Boost it up, yeah. Be, so yeah. I would have to flip this over to get this arrow showing here. Not only does this give me a slightly better um, ability related to what I was able to do before, but it also gives me an arrow that I need to be able to get to the next rank here. Um, so after I'm able to do that, I'd move on to the next one where I would, again, I would collect some series of patches here as well as uh, some... Um, uh, extra knowledge that had been developed in a particular area. And then finally here, if I'm able to achieve uh, the badges that I need in any one of these groupings, plus three um, sort of extended areas of knowledge, then I would win the game. So what you do is on your turn, you have one of four actions that you can take. Um, you can either draw some cards. So we have this card draw section over here and you can either um, draw cards from here for your turn or you can move around on the map and I'll talk about that in a second. If you decide to draw cards you can do it in one of two ways. You're going to get two cards from your draw unless you choose to take a wild. If you take a face-up wild which there's none out yet um, but if you were to take a face-up wild that would be the only card that you could get. Otherwise, you'd get to draw two cards and you would either uh, draw both of them from one side of the, the draw pile. So I could either take both of these cards here or I could take both of these cards here. 
or you could take any one card plus one off the top of the draw pile. And it does refill as soon as you draw a card. So let's say that I decide to take a card from over here. I would take this card and then this would refill and I would have my choice. Not that that's much of a choice, but let's pretend it was. Okay, so I had drawn this card from the draw pile. We refill immediately and then I could draw another one of these cards here or I could draw one off of the the top of the deck. As soon as I've decided though to draw from one side of the draw pile, I have to continue to draw only from that side of the draw pile or from the top of the deck. So I couldn't take this card and then say, oh, you know what? I really don't want either one of these. I'm gonna take this instead. You can't switch over on the draw pile like that. So that's one thing that you can do is draw two cards on your turn. You can also um, draw a card and move a camper. So you could draw any one card that you want to, and then you could move one of your campers. And your campers are represented by these little meeples that are on the board, and they start at different locations, um, and you can move them around the map to sort of get them in better positions so that you're ready to earn the badges that you have been preparing to learn, uh, or excuse me, to earn. Um, so if you do that, again, you draw a card and you move your meeple one space adjacent to wherever it is. So I could move here, I could move here, or I could move here. If I step into a space with another player's meeple or other player's meeples, I have to pay each person that I've joined one card, even if they have additional meeples. So even if Nick had two meeples here, I would still only have to pay him one card. But if we were playing a three player game and both of the other players had uh, meeples here, I would have to give them each one card. Um, so that's one of the things I can do is I can move. I can also um, spend cards in my hand in order to achieve a patch. So if you notice that the cards have these patch symbols um, in sort of the compass rose orientation of the card, um, I can, if I have the cards necessary, uh, which is dictated here in the bottom corner, I can spend those cards in order to achieve a patch and the way that that's gonna work is I would move my meeple from, from its current card onto a new card. So in this case here, I could either go this way or this way or this way. Whichever way I go, I'm going to step onto that card and then I'm going to pay cards from my hand that meet these symbols right here. And I'm going to earn the patch uh, that I stepped over to get here. So if I was sitting on this card here and I stepped this way, then I would earn this patch right here, which would be my trailblazing patch. And I would just take that and I would add it to my sash. And then I would have uh, one of the patches that I need to hopefully win the game. All the patches give you special sort of abilities. Some, some of them are one-time use abilities. Some of them um, sort of happen for the rest of the game, but they all give you special abilities that you can leverage to try to help you win. Um, and then finally, the last thing that I could possibly do is I could place a new uh, worker on the board. So I would have to spend cards from my hand that would match the tent type of the card that I wanted to jump onto. So let's say that I wanted to end up on this card right here, Firefly Falls. I would have to spend two blue tent cards from my hand. Doesn't matter what else is on them, right? So let's say that I had this card in hand and then maybe this card. It's fine that they have different symbols. This one's a um, an or. An or, thank you. And this one is a hatchet, uh, as long as those two blue tent symbols are there. So I could spend those cards to uh, sort of populate on a blue tent symbol, and I get to put a new meeple out. Um, and yeah, so that's what I can do on my turn. I can either draw cards, I can um, move meeples on the map. I can put new meeples on the map or I can attempt to achieve a patch if I have the cards that I need in hand and I can sort of move into to the patch that I need. Um, the game is going to end, like I said, when one player has achieved all the patches and, and sort of like the uh, promotions that they need in order to um, make it to the, what is this? As a badger? My, yeah, a badger. badger. Thank you. Uh, a badger's rank in the troop so yeah should we give it a try yeah let's get to it 
So we're gonna go ahead and jump into our vlog of Camp Pine Town, and we're gonna mm -mm, Pine Top. Pine Top. I always get that confused. <laughs> pine Top. Pine Top. But yeah, we're gonna get into it, and we'll see you guys in a second. Toodles. Hey, Sarah, and welcome back, our meeple people. So, how's it going so far in Camp Pine Top? Well, I think it's going fairly well. Uh, Troop 3939 has advanced to... What is beaver. this creature? Beaver. Thank you. I kept, kept thinking woodchuck. We've advanced to the beaver rank. Um, and we have some patches we've earned. We've got... Got a lot uh, of patches. Yeah, we've got uh, some basic skill patches like camping, canoeing, and hiking. We've got some uh, sort of like... Um, uh, I guess like trait patches where we're resourceful and we show leadership. Uh, and then we're also a recruiter for our, our scout troop, I guess. Nice. So yeah, we've got some nice patches going on. We have uh, been able to sort of level up one of our patches. We can canoe um, for less than we could before. So we're showing some expertise in that area. And yeah, I think it's going well. We are well on our way to the coveted Badger uh, rank. How about you? How's it going over there at uh, Troop 4486? So at Troop 4486, we also are having, uh, we are also at uh, Beaver rank and we're trugging right, right along. Got a nice assortment of uh, patches and it is going very well and I'm hoping to win this time because you were the the troop leader before in our uh, previous game but yeah so one thing that we I didn't mention at the setup is that there are these four um, sort of uh, like mid-game goals or like I guess goals that you can attempt to achieve throughout the game um, and we've each also achieved one of those for example I was a nope you were a cookie seller you had uh, two campers sharing two different map cards with other players campers so you managed to manipulate a situation where um, we're on two cards where I had campers, you managed to put campers there as well, uh, which meant that you got to sort of claim this achievement, which gave you the pink ore patch. Um, and then I was able to achieve this one here, the regroup. I had three campers on a single map card, and that allowed me to gain the, um, leadership patch. Um, and... We are, we're doing well. Um, I think I'm about to get another promotion to Ooh, Raccoon. I'm not, I'm not at the Raccoon stage yet. Uh oh, all right. Well, I guess we'll see how it plays out. Awesome. So we're gonna get back into it and we will get back at the end of the game to show you guys who is the winner and loser of Camp Pine Top. All right, see you guys in a second. Toodles. Welcome back, Meeple people, and, well, we have our new camp counselor, leader extraordinaire. Ta-da! Ta-da! Sarah is our winner of Camp Pine Top. I have achieved badger status. You've gotten the badger status, but I'm over here in the raccoon status. So, what did you think of the game, Nick? I really enjoyed this one, like, a lot. And it just, everything that's going on on the, the board and all the abilities, all the patches that that uh, will manipulate the game and make you be able to do more things and then upgrading them. It, upgrading them is real easy, so it's not like a chore to get uh, your, your patches upgraded. So I, I really enjoyed this one. It's uh, the strategies there. It didn't seem too terribly complicated to figure out the game. You were able to teach it pretty well. And there's a lot more content there's in a ton uh, of camp content. Pine Top. Yeah, there's a ton of content we did not even um, play with. There's extra cards. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> there's a bunch more of these sort of like map tiles. There's more of these. Um, there, There's a solo mode, which has a bunch of extra content. Um, and the solo mode looks really fun. It's actually like a, it seems, I only just glanced at it, but it seems like it's like a campaign based sort of thing where you play Ooh. like a series of games. Um, and it's got a bunch of extra stuff in the box just for the solo campaign. Nice. Um, there are two sort of like modular, uh, expansions that were, um, included as well that we haven't even tried out yet. 
Um, so there's a bunch of extra content for this one that we haven't even gotten to try yet. And I'm really, really excited about that because we really liked this one. Yeah, we'll um, have to maybe even do another vlog. Maybe yeah, even maybe a vlog with more on a of the solo. Content. Or yeah. yeah, or with the, like a solo playthrough. And then also maybe with more of the content too, because there's some there's some stuff they sent with it uh, that we were just like, wow, like yeah. So this was kickstarted. Um, I don't know if I I'd assume because Talon Strike sells their games in retail after Kickstarters. I'd assume you can get this one in retail, but it was kickstarted and. Um, from what I can tell, based on like what's in the box and what it says in the instructions and stuff like that, there might be some Kickstarter content in this box. Um, I don't know if they decided to go ahead and, and include that in like all of their versions, even the ones in retail or not. So this might be a Kickstarter copy that has some of that extra content. Um, but one way or the other, I'm really excited to try some of the additional content. And then I usually don't like solo games very much. That's just not what I really enjoy about playing games. I don't like playing by myself necessarily. Um, but I think that this one was a lot of fun and I really enjoy campaign modes. So um, maybe... The fact that there is a campaign mode just is yeah. really, really appealing because I could totally see like just a cool solo campaign mode of uh, Camp Pine Top. Yeah. So I think that we'll definitely try it out with some of the additional content that was provided. Um, and then maybe we'll even try it out as a solo play. Um, Nick or I will try it out, or both of us maybe. Um, and yeah, I, I really liked it. I thought it was really, really cute. I love the theme. Um, I like the theme that like we're scouts and we're learning different skills and we're earning our patches for those skills. I thought that that was a well implemented theme, um, having uh, like sort of our abilities sort of scale as we gained more knowledge and experience made sense, right? The and you could also and scale it in different uh, different paces. People could go after certain things, so you didn't have to kind of follow in the footsteps of somebody else. Yeah. So like that was one thing that I decided to do this time around was. I decided to, in order to increase in rank, you have to achieve these certain things, right? And um, in order to get past uh, the skunk rank, you have to start sort of leveling up some of your skills, right? So like you start with a skill on this side here and then you can level it up and you get to flip it over to this side here. So the skill gets a little bit better, but then you also gain one of these arrows here and you need those in order to progress any further past the skunk rank. So what I did was I kind of hung back at skunk a little bit and I sort of set up for the future. I was like, okay, well, as a skunk, I know that I have some of these things. I think at that point I had two of the brown diamonds. So I was like, okay, I know I've got these. I know I'm going to need them to get through the next couple of rounds. So I'm not wasting anything, right? I know I need this to get ahead. So while I'm kind of hanging back here at this skunk level, I can sort of set up for some of these other things that I need. And then when I feel prepared, I can actually go ahead and level up one of those skills so that I can get um, promoted to the next level. And then I already ready to get promoted to this level. I have all of the patches and everything I need to, to get through this level. I just need to get another one of those skills sort of um, boost it up a little bit and then I can really quickly be promoted through the rank of raccoon as well. And then again, same thing with the honey badger. I, or the badger, I'm not sure if there's a difference between badgers and honey badgers. Um, I think about the honey badger is just an internet thing, but... <laughs> no, I, honey badgers are a real animal, okay. but I don't know if there's a difference between like a standard badger and a honey badger. I'm not sure if that's like a, you know, different... Different. Honey badgers don't give a hoot. <laughs> I don't know, but continue. Anyway, so then I, I was just thinking that, you know, like you can kind of build up to this, but you don't have to like run straight there because if you don't upgrade your skills, then you can't get here yet. So I kind of did this thing where I like looked way ahead and said, okay, as long as I'm not doing anything that isn't actually going to um, get me anywhere later, as long as everything that I'm doing now will matter in the future, then I'll just sort of hang back up here where I've got a nice hand limit and I'm accumulating a lot of abilities. Um, and then I'll sort of jump, you know, jump from rank to rank pretty quickly once I get up there. And that seemed to work nicely. I, I had fun trying that. I was kind of nervous because Nick was very much like, 
uh, he pulled ahead pretty quickly and then he stayed ahead of me, like fairly far ahead of me for a while um, while I sort of set up a, like a long game kind of thing and I wasn't really sure it was going to work, but it did. So that was cool. Um, I don't know. I just, I think this game is really fun and it's super cute. I love the, the anthropomorphic, theme. Anthropomorphic. Uh, yeah, I love anthropomorphic, anthropomorphic creatures, yeah. right? I really like that. I love the theme. I think it was really well implemented. Um, it's got a tiny, tiny bit of an, uh, an indie game or, um, like a, um, um, I don't know, like an independently produced game feel to it. It's just, just a tiny little bit. There's just a couple things here and there where for whatever reason or another, maybe it's like the graphics or, or something just doesn't quite feel like a completely, you know, polished game, but everything works perfectly. It was super fun. Um, all the components are of decent quality um, and they provided tons of everything, right? There's either what you need or plenty more. Like with all the cards, there's a bunch more cards in the box we're not even playing with um, for the map cards and these sort of like uh, additional goal cards and stuff like that. Um, they could have, um, yeah, anyway, I think they provided um, plenty of everything. A lot of stuff is really nice. They have the, the shaped meeples that have the screen printing on them, right? They could have just made them like standard meeples, but they gave us these nice sort of upgraded meeples. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's what yeah. I think of Camp Pine Top. It's a lot of fun. I'm excited to see how the other content sort of changes things up. Um, and I might even be trying the, uh, the solo mode on this, even though I don't normally care for solo modes. I think that this one could be a lot of fun pretty awesome yeah this is definitely one that's coming into our collection staying with us yeah and uh but yeah we hope you all enjoyed this vlog of camp pine town pine. and top. Uh, pine top Ugh. i don't know why i'm saying town um uh, camp pine top and join us on our next vlog and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon to keep updated with all our content well until next time we'll see you guys later toodles